with the dimension thing, it kind of goes like this because we got to understand that whenever you're going to get stuff into your life, it's not it's coming from somewhere. Okay, and you are the source of the creation of wherever. So let me just show you kind of how these things kind of just appear and come in. So let's say you're walking on a tight rope, right? So you're walking on this tight rope, you can only go backwards and forwards. So you're do you're going in what two dimensions, right? But let's say you have an ant, and the ant is on that tight tight rope. The ant can go in four dimensions. It can go backward, forward, side to side. So when the ant, even though you and the ant are on that tight rope, what separates? What's the difference between these dimensions? The size of the atom, the scale, how big or how small these atoms are. An ant is very small, so he can go backwards, forwards. He can go across the tight rope. You're bigger. So you can't go, you only can go backwards, forwards. You can't go side to side. You fall off. But so what's, what's so important about dimensions and, and just manifesting stuff? Well, you have to understand is just like everything else in the universe, uh, everything exists as what we call electromagnetic waves. Your thoughts are these waves of energy and they will go out and they will come back. And what they do is they seep into these different dimensions. Now, within these dimensions, there's different experiences of reality that you can partake of. You can bring things from these from these different dimensions and bring them into your dimension. It just happens that we could only we only exist in three. But there, of course, there are higher dimensions, right? We up to 13 dimensions according to string theory. Now, there, of course, there are higher dimensions, right? We up to 13 dimensions according to string theory. Now, think about dimensions, right? We up to 13 dimensions according to string theory. Now, think about this stuff is this. Once you understand that you have all these unlimited dimensions, we know 13, but I believe there's unlimited because there's things we can't see or grasp yet. So they're, they're, they're definitely out there and they exist on waves or frequency waves, right? These frequency waves. Now, what controls these dimensions is you, is your ability to think. Now, check this out. For example, you know, you can see and you can hear in your own mind. So you know there's two realities going on, right? You got the external, the internal. Because all of you can do it. You can close your uh, you can close your eyes and you can see some see something and you can also hear stuff in your own head. You can do it outside too. So it's the fact is that you know what's that thing inside? That's your uh, your what we call your highest awareness, your authentic self. It's your consciousness. It's the fabric of the universe saying that the body you're not really here. You're the mind's eye, correct? Someone says the mind's eye. So what happens is when someone wants to create something in their life, they tend to have a lot of doubt about it. And the reason why we have so much doubt about it, that we can create or our, get what we want is because of how we were conditioned through the physical reality, the physical world, the perceived physical world. Now look, one of the biggest lies that were told to all of us or all of everybody including all of me and your, you is that you were a linear or a one like a, dimen a one dimensional three dimensional being and you could only see these things in backwards and forwards and this is why we ha we're so gripped and controlled by time by linear time but that's not the truth the truth is you are a multi-dimensional because your consciousness the mind the waves they perceive throughout the entire universe and they can bring everything back you got to remember this guy just like energy cannot be created or destroyed, what about information? Information is your thoughts. Every idea that ever originated, even from a higher intelligent being, extraterrestrial, whatever, the information out, is out there. You can grasp it. And let's get even more deeper. What about another version of you, what we call the future self, which exists according to physics, quantum physics, because we know that these dimensions are what we call compactified. They're stacked on each other, and you can get there. Okay, man, so all of this sounds fascinating and great, man, but so how is this going to help me? Well, it's going to help you because if you could understand that your mind creates the reality, and then you can get into a space where you can bring it in. You want to basically, you want to get out of your own way. So here's how you get out of your own way. When I'm talking about getting out of your own way, I'm speaking about your, your personality or your construct of what you call your ego. Because that's always going to keep you in the limited three-dimensional world or the perceived physical world. So here's how you can do this stuff, all right? All you have to do, you have to start to learn how to relax. When you relax, 
and you get in touch with your f senses and your feelings and your environment, you now you are now present. Uh, when you are present, all of time, or we perceive as time, becomes one unity. Now it becomes the past, the present, and the future. They are all happening simultaneously. Now that they are happening simultaneously, you can go to different perceived timelines, right? And you will bring them back into their into this reality. See how that works? And once you do that, that's when the information comes in. You get you know what inspiration is, you know what intuition is? Those are things that will come to you from these higher states of awareness or beings. So the real secret is we have to start to learn to relax and let go and allow it to come in. You know, I said this before in another video. Someone asked me this question. You know, the biggest block for people to create their lives is the ability to let go. Or the, You know, they don't understand or know how to truly let go and let the universe do the work for them. So what, what, you know, there's so many things about letting go. What is letting go? Letting go is basically you getting out of your way you you stop trying to control you don't need to control anything it's everything is already set for you it's set for you to to receive what you want because the minute you conceive it and the minute you perceive it you are conjuring it up from these different realms or different realities and they'll all start to come to you you know the interesting thing too is the brain how our brain operates you know the part of our brain that we use a lot is the most limited part of our brain. And that part of our brain, we don't get all the information. A lot of stuff is, is filtered out from us. The other part of your brain that you really should be using, we don't have access to it a lot because no one taught us how to do it. Yeah, someone says it's not caring and allowing the energy to come in. I would put it that way. I would just say, just be in a state of peace and just knowing it's it, it will come because you're you're creating it, you know, the you're the ultimate creation of all of this. It's, it's everything is coming through you, by your experiences, your awareness, your thoughts, your feelings. You are the one that is doing all of this stuff. It, it takes you to different realms. You can dream visions. You can see the the, the numbers. You do the lottery or the the house, the car. These can all come to you because they because they all exist simultaneously. And we as human beings, this is something that wasn't weren't taught to us in schools. And this is why you need to know this because you have it in you. It's there right now. You can tap into this into this thing. And it's the secret now, you all heard this before, it's feelings. Feelings and feelings. So what feelings? Where do feelings come from? Do feelings come from the body? Do feelings? Well, the body interpret feelings because your body have nerve impulses. These nerve impulses hit and you tell. But true feelings will always attribute and come from what's called your heart. The heart energy part is what produces this feelings. The feelings then are picked up to the subconscious, the unconscious. The unconscious then sends them and you feel them. But the most powerful ways of to create what we want is the feeling state. And always remember this, guys. You don't have to feel what someone else tells you to feel is the right feeling you must just feel what it feels what your body tells you is right for you some people can feel super excited about something some people can feel just chill and calm that's your body all, all of our bodies are uniquely made up to to tap into our world our feelings and their feelings is totally different so try to focus and lock in and learn your body learn your feelings your, learn your way to create a manifest we are never we're never going to be able to manifest the same way as someone else because you have a unique makeup and this is important you have to know yourself how many people know themselves know yourselves involve what paying attention to what's happening in the moment being aware of your thoughts right the feelings the ego the mo I'll give you the biggest tip for you to learn to know yourself right now this will help you to learn the, the best way you want to learn to know yourself, okay, is to identify the logical mind and the illogical mind. Once you can identify those two minds, you will know how each one operates. And by the way they operate, you can class them and then you'll start to tap into your higher self. So let me give you a quick tutorial on that. The logical mind is what we call our 
analytical reasoning, looking around, thinking. That's where you get all the junk, the bad, the negative, all that, the fear. All. That's from the logical mind. The illogical mind now is a little more subtle. It's, it's more with your feelings. It's your actions. It's your habits. It's your routine. That's the subconscious mind, okay? The illogical mind, what differs from the illogical to the logical is the illogical mind says it right there. It's illogical. It can get you it believes literally anything you say to that mind the logical mind doesn't work that way the logical mind has structure and it looks for evidence of that stuff your unconscious mind don't need evidence to create your world okay Let me repeat that again your unconscious mind don't need evidence so what's the biggest tip you don't have to have evidence to create although you can use your conscious mind to help you by looking for evidence to impress the subconscious more. But you can just go right to the source and just have what's called the faith. And the faith will create the energy. The energy will create the manifestation. But for some people, the more analytical people, right-minded, left-brained people who need the evidence, you can go ahead. You can do that. You can just look at content and say, okay, uh, does someone have manifested what I've manifested? Let me take a look at it. Oh, they have. That will help you more. But once you distinguish that, so you got the, the logical, the illogical. Okay, so here's the next. So what's in the middle? Because there's a middle ground there, right? That's the space of your awareness. That's where you truly reside. That's the authentic higher version of you. That's you right there. Between the illogical and the logical. There is, the, there is where the intuition. There is where the visions. There is where the knowing. There is where the downloads. That's your higher self. There is... There is no self there. It's just you existing as a total conscious awareness being to interact. And once you understand that, then you can start to take control of that. Because now you can truly become aware of the minds. When you become aware of the minds, you can instruct the minds in two ways. You can instruct the mind verbally. You can instruct the mind subliminally. So when you instruct the minds, the minds now will start to interpret what you instructed because that's how the brain works. And then once you start to now kind of disassociate yourself from the logical mind, the ego mind, you will find more peace, you'll become more present, and you'll have more joy, and you'll have more ability to create a wonderful life. You'll manifest things a lot faster because you've suspended your disbelief what we call limiting beliefs. Remember this. Here's a big tip I want to leave you with. In your logical mind, you will never be able to live your full potential. Your full potential cannot reside in the logical mind because the logical mind is a survival mechanism. Your full potential is always hidden or what we put in the unconscious mind and your full potential is in the middle ground, in the higher self. So if you're someone and you're thinking about, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, you're not living your full potential. How do I live? You let go and not do not try to figure out how you're going to create what you want. In other words, you decide what you want and then you push it into the illogical mind. The illogical mind now will start to work on it. And then you, as the awareness of all of this stuff, you just watch from behind the scenes. You just kind of watch your thing come in. And when these feelings come in and when they do, they will come in, these negative feelings or emotions, remember, they are passing through. Just like, remember, we are conduits, people. We have energy, information is always passing through us. We are electromagnetic beings, water and energy. We are. Con if you go to someone right now, stand next to them, you're picking up their energy. Stand right next to someone, your heart is a six feet energetic field. That means people can literally feel your heart. You can feel them. But most of us unconsciously don't know this and we don't know how to perceive and tap into this stuff. So all, you got to understand, do not take everything that comes into your head as you thoughts come from all over different people different realm different dimensions it's not you accept what is going to resonate with you and then let what doesn't resonate with you flow through see how that works logic and the conscious mind is the same thing logic conscious ego they're the same thing they're a unity ego is the personality conscious logic is the intelligence of it the ego is the one that's stubborn haughty pride take things personal victim 
intelligence is a part of that where you can know something know all that stuff that's all resides in the logical mind logical mind works very different the unconscious mind is a portal to a higher state of awareness it's an infinite intelligent mind it's connected to what we call god source universe whatever that's the part of the mind that we all should be attempting to do you can reach that mind through meditation through being present through subliminals through talking through just thinking new thoughts through understanding and then suspend your disbelief that's how you will attain that and once you get that once you're in that state that's what you call enlightenment when you're enlightened you are enlightenment just basically means you're above your ego now not an egotistical, it just means that you are aware that you are not the ego. You're aware that you're just pure conscious awareness and everything is flowing through you and everything is a part of you and you're not becoming attached to anything. That's enlightenment. You get to that level once you understand these mind grasp. Okay? So those are just some quick tips I want to, under to help you to understand that learn the minds, learn the different dimensions learn the energy of yourself that way you can start to get more information and you can become what you came here to become which is the best version to experience to build to grow to help to teach to motivate to love while doing all of this here and stop getting attached the need the desperation we can let that go because those are conditions that were taught and pushed on to us. They're not us. You know it's not you because you feel unbalanced when these things come into you. What is you? When you feel happy, when you feel inspired, when you're in the moment. That's who you are. That's called your baseline frequency. That's when you were, when you came here, when you were born, when you accepted. Your DNA, everything was programmed for that baseline frequency. You, you were already tuned for success. What happened is, they just messed with your tuning, give you all these glitches to make you feel untuned. But you can always tune yourself back because that's already built in you. What's built in you, no one can take apart. You can't take that stuff apart, man. It's, what's in you is already in you. They can glitch it, they can rewire it, but guess what? You can always go back and rewire it and fix it again. So they can't take you, they can't take what's yours. You're the only person that can stop yourself. You're the only person that can get in your own way. Remember that. There's nobody out there to get you but you in your own mind. And once you understand that, that's going to be the freedom that you will change and transfer your life. Freedom is the ability to understand that all of this is all a game. And there's nothing for me to be desperate to hold on to. See how that works? All of that. Detachment is the Attachment is the biggest stopper of our desires. And that's what people struggle with. You can do everything. You can do the visualizations. But if you're attached to the outcome, if you need it, if you're desperate, you are pushing the very thing from you. There's nothing to be attached because it's already within you. You're a part of it. Just allow it to come in. Use the mind in the right way. See it. Expect it. Let it go. Move on with your life. Look for it, expect it, but don't need it. The, the, I mean, that that is the that's it. Uh, I mean, and so if you if someone asks me right now, well, man, okay, so what is calling the attachment? How can I get how can I get attachment? I'll tell you this, okay? Then I have to go. All attachment stems from an identity crisis. All attachment stems from you believing you are what you think you are, the ego. It's that's all it is. It's the beliefs, it's the personality, it's your name, it's whatever they gave you. That's your attachment. You associate yourself with that thing. If you can only understand, that's a concept. And if you can only get away from the logical mind, that's when you will free yourself and you'll be detached and you won't need it and you'll get it so fast. That's it. Get out of the ego. No, no, listen now. You cannot destroy the ego. You so don't try to kill the ego. There's no such thing as that. What you can do, your ego will always be there, but it's in the background. It's not affecting you anymore. It's like, oh, that's the ego. Bye-bye. Oh, that's my ego talking. Okay, I'm not taking it. See that? The difference. It's not bothering you. It's not impressing you. You're aware of it. Now it's just a background noise. It's filtered out.
See? And all that comes to the central nervous system, the limbic system, which pushes all that feelings. So relax. Let it come. All right, guys. See you next time.